Morning everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is the second episode of what I believe will be three in the making of the phase converter. It's gonna be a fairly short video. Uh, we're just gonna add a few extra things to the layout we just got done with. Uh, the third episode will be much longer. That's where we're gonna mount it in the cabinet and do some extra stuff. So no need to dilly dally, let's jump right into it. The first of the three things I was gonna show in this video, I'm gonna skip over. We're gonna stop short, I'm not gonna go into it because it failed in the end. I wanted to replace the push button switch that put the start capacitor in the circuit with what's called a potential relay. And I'll be honest, at a high level I understand what they do, but it was pretty much an off-label use. And although it worked in testing, it failed almost immediately when I had it in the final build configuration. It wasn't a wiring thing, I quadruple checked that. So I decided that was not uh, something I wanted. I didn't want to have something that either had a really short lifespan or was flaky. So I went with a much more straightforward approach. And I'll show you that in part three of the video. For now, we're just gonna skip over that I did this. From the original layout, the number one thing I wanted to add to provide some safety was a circuit breaker on the outbound side of the phase converter. This will protect against short circuits and overloads on any downstream equipment, and I think it's critical to any of this type of thing you do. The incoming side of the phase converter will be protected by the breaker that's in the panel it'll be wired to, so that end's covered. This is a three-pole breaker I got off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to it in the video description. Like some of the other items I have, this mounts with a DIN rail. I find this super convenient. So I throw a little piece of DIN rail down and clip it on. It's simply wired in line between the three output lines of the phase converter and the terminal block that I'm using here. In the final build, I didn't use that terminal block. The outputs came directly off the breaker. The next component I added was a magnetic motor starter. And this is basically just a big relay switch. The one I'm using here is a three-pole motor starter. I could have actually used a two-pole starter. And the fact that it's called a motor starter is kind of a misnomer. Again, it's really just a big relay. The initial wiring is really simple and just goes in line where the barrel switch was. It protects me in the instance of a power outage because when power is interrupted to a motor starter, when it restores, it won't reactivate. You have to physically hit the start button. Additionally, because it's a relay, the coils don't require as big a switch to activate them. I did a pretty good job of narrating what I'm doing and how this works. So I'm going to stop the voice over here and we can listen in. We're going to reuse this push button along with a second one on here. They make really nice ones that say on and off. Those work great for these. I'll put a link to those in the doobly doo. The motor starter relay is something you kind of got to wrap your head around. First part's easy. It's basically a switch. It switches between the lines and the loads. And the switch is just a relay, so a magnet. The activation of the magnet is what closes the switch and allows everything to go. If you deactivate that magnet, the switch opens up and the rest of the circuit shuts down. So what we need is, first off, because this coil is 110, we're gonna cheat a little and because this is technically just a 220 circuit, not a 110 220, we're going to borrow a leg off of the ground. And over here on this other side is where the coils hook up. We're going to hook this to one side of the coil. Just trust me when I say it's one side of the coil. Now to activate it initially, I need a normally open switch, which means when you're not touching it, no power's flowing. We just want a, a quick, when I push the button, power activates the coil. Okay, no problem there. We're going to take power from one of these spade switches here, one of the spade terminals. It goes into our switch. We're going to come out of our switch, and we're going to go to the other side of our spade terminal, or the other side of our coil.
Well, what we can do here, just to test this and you can hear it, is I'll disconnect the outgoing. What we should be able to do is power this up. And when I press the button, we should hear the relay click. When I let go of the button, the relay will click again, turning on. Okay, we have power, so I got 110 volts to here. Push the button, we get a click. Now I let go of the button, click is done. Well, that's fine. That means when I push the button, power is flowing and my phase converter is running. But I want it to keep running when I let go. Okay, that's easy enough to do. And unplug it again. Because we have power coming out of this side, we can take and use it. And it becomes kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Once power is coming in, power keeps coming in. Now I used what's called an e-stop switch here. It means when you press it down, it stays down. And you have to turn it to pop it back up. You see this a lot on equipment. This just happens to be what I had, what I could buy easily. Now, coming out of the other side of this, and we're going to go back down here to the coil. Same place our other one was. So at this, this is a normally open or normally closed switch. So it's always flowing power. This one's normally open. So let's go through this. When I push the button, I get I pull power off the line, activate the coil, and I get power going from one side of the, of the relay to the other. Once I get to the other side, I borrow power from it, which keeps going through here, and that energizes the coil continually. Basically, like I said, a self-fulfilling prophecy. When I break this circuit here, by pushing the e-stop, the magnet should release. So let's give it a try. Okay, temporary push it. When I let go, it should stay on. It stays on, no release. Now when I push the e-stop switch, it'll go off. There it is. On, off. Just like that. The big thing about these is they come in different capacities as far as the switching mechanism but the coil itself comes in different voltages as well this is a 110 volt coil the one on my router is a 12 volt coil we're going to demonstrate a power outage first we're going to start the machine oh ah there we go e-stop wasn't off we're going to start the machine machine's running the power goes out for whatever reason stormy night Power goes out. Oh, you heard the relay trip. Ten minutes later, or four days, like around here, the power comes back on. Nothing happened. There's no power over here to energize it. I've got to physically press the button again. There it is. Oh, one more thing. We need a light. We want to wire the light to be an indicator that we have power. I would say one of the best ways to do this is down here off of one leg. This is a 110 volt indicator light. So in our panel, we could either run off of this side of the relay, which is the same as running off of one of these screws. So for now, okay, let's we'll hook our power back up going out to the rest of the machine. One full system test. I push the button, the magnetic relay starts, the coil continues to work through this loop, the light goes on indicating things are working, the motor starts and sits and runs. Ready? As promised, fairly short and sweet. 
The next video in this series, we'll put it all in a cabinet, mount it on the wall, and wire it in permanent. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.